Kemenge interview at Imperial coming right up. Hey there, welcome to Kemenge Weekly. At the end of September, I was approached by a chemical engineering applicant regarding Imperial College London and their chemical engineering interviews. So I approached the current first year cohort of undergraduates doing chemical engineering at Imperial to ask for their top tricks and advice for this candidate. I think this will be quite useful to share here. So in this video, we'll be covering the key format of an Imperial chemical engineering interview, what sorts of questions you should expect and how to best prepare for these, as well as other general tips and advice. Make sure you watch until the end to get all of the key information. And with that, let's get started. As a side note, I'd recommend you watch the general tips and interview preparation advice video that I've put up with the link in the description as well as the iCard just to make sure that you have all the bases covered with respect to what I'm going to talk about in this video. And without further ado, let's get right into it. And first of all, we have the interview format. Regardless if your interview is in person or online, the format of the interview pretty much stays the same. You usually have two interviewers, one of them the main interviewer as well as the other one in a supporting role, and the interview will usually last between 20 to 40 minutes. Within the interview, they'll ask a range of things from your personal statement, a maths based question or questions, a chemistry based question or questions, as well as a general conversation towards the end where you have the chance to ask any questions you might have. Since Imperial requires its candidates to have studied maths and chemistry at pre-university level, these are each one section within the interview that will definitely come up every time, and they come in a very sectioned, structured way. They generally start off with an icebreaker question to start off the entire interview, such as how your day was going, or what you're studying at school right now. And from there on, they usually start by diving straight into the personal statement. They do like to expand on the things you've talked about within your personal statement and may even ask you to judge something within your personal statement that you've said, which may seem a bit strange at first, but it makes sense because they're trying to make a good academic conversation with you. They would then do the chemistry and math section in either order before going to the general section towards the end if they have time. The virtual interview tends to be on the shorter scale side of things, purely because of logistics and the chance that somebody might drop out of the call unexpectedly. So that's what you can expect. If you have an in-person interview, the events you would do on the interview are much longer because they constitute a number of other activities, usually starting with a registration, an introductory talk, followed by a lunch, some guided tours of the ACE extension building and the pilot plant, and then the interview itself. So that will usually be a couple of hours, as well as you get the chance to explore the campus and see your professors in person. In the lunch, you would often meet the current undergraduate students there, so it's a good chance to ask any questions you might have about their application to university and how they're finding life at Imperial. Next, what sort of questions should you expect? On top of the five key questions I covered in the general interview prep advice video, I think there's a number of other questions that you should prepare for because they do tend to crop up quite often in a chemical engineering imperial interview based on what the first years have said. One of these questions was, what exactly is chemical engineering? Or, what exactly is a chemical engineer? Now, although this may seem like a simple question at the face of it, it's actually deceptive because most people who have applied to this degree haven't heard of it until quite recently before their application, be it a couple of years or a couple of months. So just to make sure you understand what exactly the degree is about, this question is sometimes asked at interview. In terms of the math section, they will often ask you about integration and differentiation of complex equations, because this often builds into the next question of the maths, which is sometimes to do with drawing a graph. And because by differentiating you can find the turning points of a graph and their nature, it is often this path that is followed when they come to asking you about graph sketching. They could ask you to sketch the differential forms of the graphs as well and explain what they mean, with the graphs being any sort of functions from trig functions to linear equations, because they want to test your understanding and your application of your maths. Aside from integration and differentiation, you could also get questions regarding your other pure topics, which you cover in your pre-university studies. Additionally, they may even ask you about mechanics, although this is rarer, and may ask you to derive, for example, displacement velocity graphs from an equation they've given you or displacement velocity graphs from a model they've shown you. It's completely down to the interviewer's choice about what they will ask you, although they do tend to ask within a similar sort of question category. The chemistry section tends to cover much more breadth and depth of your pre-university chemistry course that you would have covered up until your university, ranging from the first topics you might have learnt post-16 to the most recent topics you might have just done a week before or during that week in class. Nonetheless, popular questions within this category tend to include structure and bonding, 
kinetics, energetics, equilibrium and rate equations, Le Chatelier's principle on the ideal gas equation, and the basics of organic chemistry and their mechanisms. Within this section, they'll typically try and test your knowledge of your physical and organic chemistry, rather than just asking you to regurgitate facts that you would have learned in class, such as testing why some structures occur the way they do, why bonding works and how you could use this to explain large complex structures, and why the thermodynamic concepts of boiling and freezing occur at constant temperature. It is not uncommon for them to test knowledge over multiple topics, such as structure and bonding within thermodynamics, for example. And how should you prepare for an Imperial Chemical Engineering interview? First of all, I'd recommend that you know all of the pre-university content that you've learned up until the point of the interview, with those topics that I mentioned previously inside out. To reiterate, within maths, that was differentiation, integration, your typical pure AS and beginning of A2 level subjects, year one mechanics, and any sort of maths that you might have mentioned already in your personal statement. And on the chemistry side of things, that was Le Chatelier's principle and rate equations, kinetics, energetics, and equilibria, thermodynamics, or basic organic chemistry, the ideal gas equation, and structure and bonding. You can practice your maths of physics and maths tutor as well as alevelmaths.com as well as practicing your chemistry from Isaac Chemistry, Physics and Maths Tutor once again and IWantToStudyEngineering.com In terms of the advice for the personal statement, I'll definitely keep that at the forefront of your preparation for the Imperial interview because this will be the section where you have the most conversation really with your tutors and your interviewers. In terms of graph sketching, you should definitely do a lot of practice on graph sketching before your interview both the mathematical ones I mentioned and also your chemistry graphs explaining relationships between activation energy and other things. You can practice your graph sketching by just taking a piece of paper and a pen, drawing an axis and then thinking up of random equations that you can sketch on the graph and then check the solutions of Desmos. And you can also find more questions for this if you search up Oxford Calculus or graph sketching practice questions on the internet. You should try to talk out loud and explain what you're thinking about when you're trying to answer these questions because it will show the interviewer that you're thinking critically about what's been given to you rather than regurgitating as well as showing your thought process so they can help and jump in when they're needed. Finally, general tips. Based on what the undergrad said, you're not expected to go into the interview knowing all the answers because that's not what they're trying to find. They're trying to find if you think critically about the information you're given and whether you are teachable as a student. This is much like real life, where when you go into engineering, especially chemical engineering, you'll go into problems that you won't have the solution for straight away, and you'll often have to make assumptions or do things wrong before you get it right, which is a natural process, and therefore the interviewer actually wants to see you struggle through something and get somewhere by the end of it to show that you are open to learning new concepts and taking on ideas because ultimately engineering is about problem solving. It's very important that you don't panic during the interview because it can seem sometimes that you keep making the wrong assumptions and remember that the interviewer is there to help you. And although you might not have to say, can I get your help? You might be able to just keep throwing ideas out, which the interviewer might jump on and say, that's a good trail of thought, follow that, or no, that's not quite correct. Maybe look at it this way. And so you should remember to remain relaxed and open to taking on what the interviewer is saying. Another key piece of information is the end section where the interviewer might ask you if you have any questions and I think you should definitely try to exploit this because it's a chance to speak with the top academic about their field of study if you like or something you're genuinely curious about within chemical engineering and also by asking a question it shows that you're passionate whether it's technical or non-technical because you only came up with that question because you thought critically about what you were doing in the first place. You could sometimes get this information about what you want to ask through researching your interviewer and although this may seem like a bit of a risky move, especially given how some of the interviewers may be from higher year modules, it's not necessary that you have to ask them something specifically technical to do with what they teach or with what they're researching into. So you can always try and read a little bit about what their specialisation is and maybe ask them about something that you found interesting from what they might have talked about recently or something about chemical engineering in general that you find quite interesting but want to know more about. Of course, you don't have to ask a question if you don't want to, but sometimes it can be a plus. And that was the breakdown of how to ace Imperial interviews for chemical engineering. Do let me know down in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to cover next. I hope you found the video useful and if it helped you out, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for future content. If you have the Imperial interview coming up, I wish you the best of luck with it. And with that comes the end of the video. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to like it if you enjoyed it and leave your comments and suggestions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels, and if you click here or here, you can watch another one of our videos. Click up here to subscribe, and thank you very much.